Hey, what's up? Welcome to Tutorial Thursdays. So real quick, before I jump into this, I just wanna update you guys in last week's video. I actually posted it and I, I put so much work into it. I woke up super early to get it done on time for you guys. I published it and then for some reason, after about an hour or so, it just got unlisted. I don't know what happened, but yeah, essentially a lot of you guys didn't get to even be notified or knew that I put out a video and I put in a lot of work. So I would really appreciate it if you guys are interested in the topic to check out the video on how to shoot live sessions. So last Thursday in the last tutorial, we talked about more of the technical side of ingesting the media, putting it on a timeline and cutting it in the most efficient way. This video, we're actually going to focus more on the flow of things, of more of the theory of why you wouldn't want to cut something in a certain way and at a certain pace. So I'm really excited about this because we've touched upon this a little bit in the editing workshop that we had recently, but I wanted to dive into it with this example because there's a few things here that I think stand out in this project that you you guys can get as valuable takeaways. So let's jump into it and let's get started. So starting things right off, we're gonna have an airport sequence before this, but essentially leads into him walking in with the suitcases into the studio and then that's where the performance starts. And we had the light come on on cue with the guitar, but it wasn't really perfect when shooting. So it, it wasn't really starting right when he was starting to play. So you'll see the, the light coming on here it wasn't really in sync. So what I had to do was just literally move the clip to where it matched because I didn't have to sync it perfectly to the audio because we're not seeing the guitar. We're not seeing him strum the chord. So I could just shift that freely. And I'm saying this here in the beginning because I had to do that many times in uh, some parts of the edit that weren't working, that weren't perfectly in sync. So something to keep in mind in these scenarios is that you can always maybe crop in a little bit or choose a take, cutting to a close up of something else to kind of mask that. So know that you have that as an option, especially in the edit, you can move things around whenever, whenever anything that would reveal that it's off sync is outside of your framing. So let's say that he was starting to play here and we want to get rid of it. Of course, you can just select the clip and scale it up a little bit and move it around to where you don't see that anymore. So guys, one of the things that I'm really pushing with uh, the idea of keeping story in mind and just putting a lot of intention behind what you do as a filmmaker really applies in the edit. Once you have all this material, there's a lot of happy accidents that can happen that as long as you're, you're keeping those themes in mind that you had when you were planning and shooting, even when you're editing, you're gonna actually be able to find a lot of nice hidden gems that can elevate your project even more. So take a listen to this part of the song. So there's a duality in what he's saying and the way that you can represent this too is right now I had a camera that was on the other side of him which is underlit as opposed to this shot which is facing the light. So you can almost have this choice where you hear it in the music, it's kind of moving up in pitch, he's, he's also singing in a way that's uplifting, like he's saying I could go for this option which is nice or I could leave in my flight that takes off at four that he says in this scene. So again, it's like having those those polar choices being represented in a cut, which is kind of similar, but just the camera bounces on the other side of him. This wasn't planned. This is just something that I noticed in the footage, but I wanted to embrace it musically where it made sense, where that, that pitch was swelling up and then dropping down again in his voice. So obviously you don't have to be this focused on trying to convey meaning in every single cut, but you should have the intention and the themes of the video close to your mind when you're editing so that you can you can actually discover these moments. And obviously this, this kind of, duality cut or whatever you want to call this is very specific to my example and there's a bunch of other types of cut and, and different creative ways of establishing flow and pace that I'm probably not even going to cover in this video. I just want to show you some of the specifics that stood out to me in this particular example. And whenever you guys catch a technique, you know, that's just something that's going to go in your toolkit. 
Now, in the video that got published that no one got to see how to shoot live sessions, I did say that you want to choose who you're focusing your attention on in terms of shots. But the same thing applies with the coverage that you have in the edit. This song is really focused on him and his emotion. Even when we have moments like this drum break, notice that I'm not really going to the drummer and I'm staying more on him. This could be due to coverage, but even if, let's say, I had a good shot of the drummer, Maybe this outtake of him kind of grooving like that might be a better transition into the next part of the song while still keeping it focused on his shift of emotion. So hopefully I'm not going too meta, but I just want to share you guys some of the some of the ideas that you can have when even justifying a certain piece that you're selecting over another. By the way, let me just go back real quick. I want to show you this uh, transition that you probably that caught your attention earlier. I, I kind of skipped over that here. We tilt up and the lens catches the flare from uh, the, the light that is right off camera, the spotlight in the back. And I use that, kind of complementing it with a orb transition, sort of this, uh, this kind of lens flare to the side here, which is tinted similarly to the flare of the light, probably not similar enough. Let me go to the color balance here and we can even take out more of the red. Yeah, you could, you could fine tune it. But the point is you have something that kind of transitions even more into the next shot. So we have this clip tilting up to the light. It fades away over the coverage of the guitar, the next clip. And then we have this transition overlay that is set to screen on top of everything that kind of glues it all together. So super simple stuff, but again, the more times that you go over your edit, your timeline, and you keep refining and adding details, more and more of these moments will stand out to you and they will kind of click. Another case of focusing on the subject is in this part of the song. You know, the keys are kind of having a nice little riff here. Your first in instinct might be to go immediately to the keyboard player, but you know, instead I kind of linger off to show that the main singer is about to change guitars. So we're showing that in two shots, the close up here, he changes kind of expression and puts down the acoustic and then we move over to reveal the electric guitar. Then after that, we go to keys, you know, doing his own thing here. Then we show him picking up the guitar, go back to him, then a little bit more of the drums, what they got going on. And then we have this nice moment with the keys. Then there is an insert. This is something that I got as a special shot at the very end of everything. Once we were done, I just got a few close-ups of uh, some moments that I noticed during the many takes that I wanted to highlight. So the, the pressing of this guitar pedal here, I think was a cool moment. So I got a close-up just for this. which now we keep him centered, you know, we move into him. This is all about him in this moment in his guitar solo. Now, after this moment, the pacing kind of changes a little bit here. And then here we have the solo moment. Now, I, I really wanted to time this right, so I, I even had to do some, some time remapping because in this part of the solo, the sound is very sharp, it's very piercing. So I wanted to match it with this flare coming in. So that's a nice way of leading into this uh, this close up. And I love seeing the tension of the strings being this close. So for for this moment, which seems like the kind of the peak of the solo, I wanted to be nice up and close and seeing all of those details in that movement. And notice that every time we keep coming back to it, we, we sort of get more and more aggressive with the moves and same with the cuts. So as the solo is picking up in, in energy, you know, we are, uh, we're, we're really allowing those light leaks, but now I'm really embracing that because I'm shaking it, you know, I'm shooting towards it to get more of them in this part of the solo because things are getting, you know, really, really epic and there's a lot of movement. And then I want to see what this is doing to him. Like, how is he interpreting? How is he putting out that that moment in the song? So it, it goes to his expression. You know, he's loving it. He's jamming out. And then now we connect to other people's faces. So instead of going directly to the keys, I want to show that he's having a good time also. So I want to make sure that out of my options and coverage here, I went to a take that had a human face. So now we're going to take a look at, you know, the, the band players for a little bit. We see him jamming out. 
and then we see the the drummer doing his own thing so it's just it's just to establish the feeling of you know this is a good time where uh we're really going in in this moment and this is more about the dynamic between the band players in my opinion to me as a viewer and not specifically a musician i'm more interested in seeing that energy and feeling that energy in the room rather than seeing the exact notes that they're playing so i want to focus more on on their their expression the the energy in the room that way again when the sound gets closed in and sweeter we close in in a close-up of the guitar so we we're kind of visualizing that in a quite literal way the the pacing of the cuts here they got pretty crazy for a bit there's a lot of different switch and coverage and here it's getting a lot kind of quieter you know we're using kind of the same shots we're not bouncing over the room a little bit too much we you know we're, we're smoothing out as the uh, as the song is also mellowing out here we have the same idea he takes off the guitar so we're staying on him because we care about his change in mood you know if he's switching an instrument we want to pay close attention to him in these moments so that's why the coverage is on him and then here in this uh this last part of the song you can see that for him i just mainly use these these takes which are very close because now he's very soft-spoken he's almost kind of whispering to us and i wanted to uh to have the same feeling as if we were leaning in and, and paying close attention to him so that's why i chose in the edit the coverage of this particular close-up so here i cut back to the wide for a second because we start hearing the backing vocals again and then we kind of pan them out in this shot and we go back to him just to go back to that that intimacy then here i let the take linger on a little bit the song was over, but I love this moment that he gave to camera, and I think that was a good uh, moment to conclude on. So that's it. That's my timeline. This is what it looks like in full. So we have uh, the adjustment layer, the 35 millimeter kind of slightly crop bars that I'm adding for these live sessions. I like to do that. It's almost like that house of cards ratio. And um, yeah, this is still not finished but I wanted to give you guys an inside look as I'm editing this with some of the thoughts that I'm having in making these cuts the way that they are. All right, guys, that is it for me. I'm signing off. I'm feeling really sick. I think I'm getting a cold or a flu, but please check out the last video that I mentioned. It got no love because of the unlisted issue on YouTube. So please watch it. Let me know what you think and get excited for tomorrow because we talked about how to edit for mood today, but tomorrow we're talking about how to shoot live sessions with mood and themes in mind. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Chris Trini and I'll see you tomorrow.